Hello students. So in the last class, last video, we talked about the indicators, acid-base indicators. Now there is one special type of indicator which is called as olfactory indicators. What are olfactory indicators? These are those substances which change their odor in acidic and basic medium. Odor means what? Smell. So those substances which change their odor in acidic and basic medium are called as olfactory indicators. What are the examples? The examples are clove, onion and vanilla. So to make olfactory indicator is also very easy. We can do it or test it at home itself. So uh, you can take any example. So I will tell you the example of olfactory indicator as vanilla. How we can make vanilla as olfactory indicator? So what we have to do is we have to take, take two test tube. Test tube A and test tube B. Test tube A contains acid in it and test tube B contains base in it. Now add some vanilla in test tube A and again vanilla to test tube B. Now smell it separately. What will you observe? You will observe that the smell of vanilla in acidic medium is different from the smell of vanilla in basic medium in test tube B. So that's what we can observe that onion, clove or vanilla can act as the olfactory indicator. Similarly, you can try with the onion also and clove also. In your textbook, one activity is given for onion. So just go through that. Now, in this chapter, you have to study about the definition of acid, bases and salt. Now, what are acids? So before I explain acid as those substances which are sour in taste and bases are those substances which are bitter in taste but all the acid and bases cannot be tested because some of the acids and bases are very strong. They are very much corrosive and uh, they are um, very much strong so we cannot test it. So how we can define acid in terms of ions? So acids are those which produce H plus or H3O plus ion when dissolved in water. What is H3O plus ion? It is also called as hydronium ion. Similarly, bases are those which produce OH minus ion when dissolved in water. So we'll be more clear by taking the examples. Let's say if you are taking HCl in the form of gas and dissolve this with water. What will happen? There will be the production of H3O plus. The production of H3O plus ion indicates that or confirms that HCl is an acid. Similarly, you can take example of H2SO4. H2SO4 when added with water, then again there is production of H3O plus. And as per the definition, production of H3O plus confirms that H2SO4 is an acid. Similarly for the bases, as I told you, production of OH minus ion in the solution shows that the solution is a basic solution. So we can take example, we can take NaOH, sodium hydroxide, and when we dissolve it in water, we will get OH minus ion. So production of OH minus ion again shows that NaOH is a base. Understood? Now, how we can define salts? Salts are any chemical compound formed from the reaction of an acid with a base. So, during this formation of salt, there is liberation of some molecules of water also that we can see in reaction. Let's say HX is an acid and MOX is a base. When we react both acid and base will get salt plus water. Here I have shown you that a molecule of water from base OH and from the acid H is getting repeated and forming the water. So by example, we will be more clear HCl plus NaOH when they are reacting 
So from here H and from here OH will give rise to one molecule of water. What is remaining? NaMcl to give the salt. So during the formation of salt, we will have liberation of some molecules of water in the solution. So that's how we can define acid bases and salt. Now the next topic is dilution. So how will we define dilution? Dilution is the mixing of any acid or a base with water which results in decrease in the concentration of H3O plus or OH minus ion in case of acid and bases per unit volume. So such acid or bases which get dissolved in water are said to be diluted and the whole process is called as dilution. So when we dilute or dissolve any acid or a base with water, the concentration goes down. As you can see, the concentrated HCl means it is a pure acid. It has high concentration of H3O plus ion in it. But when we dilute it with water, when we dissolve water in it, when we dilute some percentage of water in concentrated HCl, it is to be said as diluted HCl and we can write it in the short form as dilute HCl. So this thing we use during writing the chemical equation. Okay. So as you have come to know that if you dilute something with water, the concentration of the acid that is H plus or H2O plus ion goes down. Okay. Now, there is one more thing you should know that H plus ion cannot exist alone. If there is production of H plus ion, then it immediately reacts with water and forms the H3O plus ion that is called hydrogen ion. So, H plus ion cannot exist alone in the reaction mixture, but it exists after combining with water molecule to form the hydronium ion. So, ultimately there is the formation of H3O plus ion in any reaction mixture containing acidic solution. Now, one more thing while diluting the acid and water, you should be very careful. There is one question generally asked in the exam is, why shouldn't water be added to the acid and how the dilution to be done? So children, when the water is added to the beaker containing acid solution in it, it may cause the whole solution to splash out and the beaker may break and whole thing can be burned. So you should never add water in an acid solution. So how water and acid should be diluted or how we can dilute acid with water. So always add acid in a beaker containing water slowly with constant stirring. Then only you can make it with make it make the dilution in a safety way. Okay. Now students, your next topic is chemical properties of acid and bases. Of this lesson, acid, bases and salt. Now in this chemical properties, you have to study the reaction of metal with acids and bases. Then reaction of metal carbonates or metal hydrogen carbonates with acids. Then third reaction of Third reaction is a reaction of acid with base to form salt and water. This is actually the neutralization reaction. Fourth is reaction of metallic oxides with acids and reaction of non-metallic oxide with bases. And the fifth reaction is reaction of water with acids and reaction of water with bases. Now the first reaction will study reaction of metal with acid. Now when a metal reacts with acid, it forms salt plus it liberates the hydrogen gas. 
we we'll take one example. If we take zinc granules and we add some dilute HCl in it, now chemical reaction happens and it gives rise to salt which is called zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Now you can see here it is written AQ. AQ means aqueous. So zinc chloride what is formed will be in the solution. And here ZNS S represents the solid. It means zinc you have to take in the solid form. What happens when zinc reacts with HCl then zinc displaces hydrogen and forms ZNCl2 and H is liberated as hydrogen gas. We can take another example. If zinc granule reacts with dilute H2SO4 means dilute sulfuric acid. Here also zinc displaces the hydrogen and forms the salt zinc sulfate which always also will be in aqueous solution and hydrogen will liberate as the hydrogen gas. Now we can try um, reacting this metal with some other acid also like dilute HNO3. So here when zinc, when dilute HNO3 is added to zinc then there will be no reaction happening. It is because HNO3 nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent and it oxidizes hydrogen into water and since HNO3 is a strong oxidizing agent so it, it itself gets reduced to N2O, NO3 etc. Now if again we try with the other acid like if zinc is made to react with acetic acid that is CS3COOH then it again gives rise to the salt plus liberation of hydrogen gas. What is the salt called? This is zinc acetate ZNCS3CO whole 2. Okay. Now we can try this reaction with some other metal also instead of zinc. So if we take sodium in solid form and it is made to react with dilute HNO3 nitric acid, it gives rise to sodium nitrate in aqua solution. It is the salt plus the hydrogen gas. So, from this reaction we come to know that all the metals do not react with the acid. Like we uh, saw the example of zinc with the nitric acid. Also, the manganese and magnesium metal reacts with very very dilute nitric acid with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Now here, there is a test for the hydrogen gas liberated during the reaction of metal with the acid. Here you can see the reaction in which hydrogen gas is liberated. So we have to test whether the gas which is liberated is hydrogen gas or something different. So for that what we have to do is we have to take one test tube. In this, in this test tube we have to take some zinc granules and add some dilute H2SO4 in it. Now we have to cover this with a rubber cork leaving one space which is filled with the in which we have to put one delivery tube and this other end of the delivery tube should put in a jar containing soap solution. What happens when zinc and dilute hexy reacts as this reaction? Here the formation of zinc sulfate is happening and the liberation of hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas passes through this delivery tube and goes to the soap solution. In soaps, when it enters the soap solution, it forms the gas bubbles and if at the same time, if we bring a burning candle towards this gas bubbles, then this gas bubbles burns with the pop sound. Now, the pop sound confirms that the bubbles in the, in the bubbles, gas bubble is nothing but the hydrogen gas bubble. So, it confirms that the uh, bubbles is bubble which is filled with the hydrogen gas. Now, we can see the second reaction is a reaction of metal with base. Like the earlier reaction here also when a metal react with a base it forms salt plus hydrogen gas but all metal do not react with bases only the amphoteric metal like aluminium and zinc react with the bases to form salt and hydrogen gas we'll take one example here zinc in the form of granules when it is made to react with a base called sodium hydroxide in the solution form then it gives rise to Sodium zincate salt Na2ZnO2 in the solid form plus 
some hydrogen gas. Second example we can see here aluminium in the form of solid if we take and it is made to react with the sodium hydroxide in the solution form. Then what happens give rise to sodium aluminate salt NaAlO2 in solid form plus the liberation of hydrogen gas. So um, the first reaction of metal and acid and bases is over. Thank you. Now next reaction is reaction of metal carbonate or metal hydrogen carbonates with acid. Now we will see the reaction. When a metal carbonate reacts with an acid, it gives salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. We will take one example. What is metal carbonate? Sodium carbonate is a metal carbonate. Sodium is a metal and CO3 is a carbonate form. So it is metal carbonate. So sodium carbonate in the form of solid, if we take and make to react with HCl aqueous. HCl aqueous also you can tell. You can say dilute HCl also. So when these two react, it gives rise to a salt called NaCl, sodium chloride, plus water plus CO2 gas. What is happening here? Here sodium is displacing hydrogen and forming NaCl. And hydrogen is converted into water and then there is liberation of CO2 gas. We will take one more example. Instead of sodium carbonate, we can take potassium carbonate also. It is also a metal carbonate. So, when this is made to react with the dilute HCl or aqueous HCl, it gives rise to a salt called potassium chloride salt in aqueous solution plus water plus carbon dioxide. Now, reaction of metal hydrogen carbonate with acid. So, metal hydrogen carbonate can also be said as metal bicarbonate. So, if we react metal hydrogen carbonate or metal bicarbonate with an acid, it again gives rise to salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. We will see one example. Metal hydrogen carbonate or metal bicarbonate example of example is sodium hydrogen carbonate. It is a metal hydrogen carbonate. When it is made to react with aqueous HCl, it gives rise to NaCl salt plus water plus carbon dioxide gas. Now, the liberation of carbon dioxide gas can be proved by a test. So, we can see here the test. So, the CO2 is liberated. Whether CO2 is liberated in this reaction, to confirm this, we have, uh, been, we have to take two test tubes. Test tube A and test tube B. In A test tube, we have to take sodium carbonate 0.5 grams and we have to add 5 ml of dilute HCl in it. Cover it with a rubber cork and leave one space to put one delivery to here so that the when the reaction happens and CO2 gas is liberated, it passes through this delivery tube and the other mouth of the delivery tube, delivery tube is put under one more test tube containing lime water. What is the formula of lime water? It is calcium hydroxide CaOH whole 2. So, when this CO2 liberated by the reaction of Na2CO3 and dilute HCl, uh, this CO2 when passes through the lime water, it turns lime water milky. So, what is actually, what chemical reaction is happening here? That we can see in this reaction. See here, the lime water in this test tube, when CO2 comes to lime water, it forms calcium carbonate solution which has, which is actually a milky precipitate plus the liberation of some water molecules. Similarly, in this case also, if we take 0.5 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate and we'll add 5 ml of dilute HCl in this test tube and the, when the reaction takes place, what is happening here? See here? NaCl is getting formed in the solution only plus some water molecules plus CO2 is getting liberated. So, so this CO2 gas passes through this delivery tube again containing a test tube. This, this test tube containing CaOH uh, hole 2 that is lime water in it and it makes the lime water again milky. So from this reaction we will get to know CaOH hole 2 lime water. When CO2 passes through this solution, it makes the solution 
मिल्की सो दिस इज एक्चुअली गेटिंग फॉर्म सी ए सीओ थ्री कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट इज फॉर्म हियर सो हेन्स दिस टू टेस्ट कन्फर्म्स दैट दिस लिब्रेशन ऑफ गैस इज नथिंग बट द सीओ टू लिब्रेशन विच इज मेकिंग द लाइम वॉटर मिल्की नाउ वन मोर रिएक्शन यू हैव टू स्टडी इज वॉट एवर सी ए सीओ थ्री इज फॉर्म इट इज इन एक्व सोल्यूशन वेन वी सेपरेट इट एंड फॉर्म गेट गेट इट इन टू ए सॉलिड फॉर्म दिस सॉलिड फॉर्म कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट इज अगेन मेड टू रिएक्ट विथ सम मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ वॉटर एंड वेन एक्सेस ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस इज पास थ्रू दिस सोल्यूशन वॉट हैपन्स Again, the reaction takes place, and one product is getting formed that is called calcium hydrogen carbonate. That is CaHCO3 whole two, and it will be in the solution form. That is in aqueous form. So this is about the second reaction.